What's up everybody? Today I want to talk to you about downrigger fishing for salmon. We're only a couple days out from going to CQ, get in on that March 1st blackmouth opener. Um, could be an awesome time in CQ. Uh, I love fishing there in the summer and uh, one of the most important things you got to be equipped with uh, fishing for salmon these days is one of these downriggers. Downriggers are the most popular and effective way to catch salmon in open water. Whether you're in the Puget Sound, the Strait, the ocean, or even the Great Lakes, where downriggers were invented, it's all about the downrigger. I get it. Downriggers may feel like cheating a little bit. Downrigger patrolling, you know, when you're not catching, that's not super exciting. But if you're not fishing with downriggers, you're missing out on opportunity to hook into more king and coho salmon. And this video, this video is gonna show you how to get it done. How to rig up your downriggers, how to fish with them, and maybe even some pro tips at the end here, sort of the 201 level of downriver fishing for salmon. Let's get right to it. Okay, so now let's talk about a few of the components of a downrigger that are important when you're fishing it and when you're rigging it up. All right, let's start with uh, the wire here. So I like to use uh, this 180 pound Sky downrigger wire. And you can also, also use braid. I'll talk about the difference between braid and wire later in the video as there's, there's advantages and disadvantages to both in different situations. All right, so I connect my wire to my terminal gear using this uh, Canon Terminator kit. This is some awesome stuff because with this Canon Terminator kit, you don't need uh, any knots or any crimping or anything like that with the wire. It all just is secured here underneath this, this rubber stuff here. You can make that change really fast out on the boat uh, if you were to break off your wire for some reason. Super, super helpful. Then I attach one of these releases. This is probably the most re uh, popular release style. You squeeze this, you put the line in, and slide it to where the black line is. You can put it behind the black line for more release tension. We'll talk about release tension and um, and uh, fishing with these things a little bit more. I got a rubber snubber here I use because I, I, um, I want some bounce uh, in this thing. I don't want it to be completely inflexible. Uh, give it a chance to flex and come free if it's gonna get stuck on a rock or something versus get stuck or break off. I got this trolling snap as part of the rubber snubber and I attach my downer weight um, using these uh, zip ties here. And I'll explain why I use zip ties. It has to do with using wire and metal on metal contact. Uh, you know, you've got this ring here and when this trolling snap and, and metal on metal are, are together, they put out a current. And depending on the species of salmon you're fishing for, we'll talk about that a bit more, but you may be repelling some of your uh, some of your salmon that you're fishing for based on how you connect these things together. One of the reasons people like to use braid is that's not even an issue. Um, the wire's not putting off any current, so you don't have to worry about that as much. We'll talk about all the pluses and minuses. Let's take a look at a couple of the controls here uh, with downrigger operation. So uh, here we have your electric downrigger um, retrieve. So you push it, right? And that's like that's more like a one-time retrieve. I can also turn it to on. I'm not gonna do it now, but if I turn it to on, which is really handy when you have a fish on and you want to retrieve your gear while you're fighting the fish, you switch that to on and it'll come up all the way till it hits this auto stop beat. That's why the auto stop beat is there, and it'll stop. This is your break. As you put this, as you release this, right? You notice it starts to spin. Spool starts to spin, and you drop. You drop your, you drop your weight down. Push the button, bring it back up. That's how easy it is to operate a downrigger. Let's talk about how we actually fish with this thing to hook salmon more effectively. First thing you're going to do is let out about 15 to 30 feet of line uh, behind the boat here uh, before you try to attach your downrigger release clip. 
Um, there's several different styles of release clip. Here's probably the most popular one. Squeeze the uh, body there and you slide the line into the black mark. Um, you can move it forward of the mark for less release tension to trip um, or behind the black mark for a little bit more. And then as you see here, we're dropping, dropping down. Before I explain exactly how to drop, uh, drop your downrigger ball down, I want to talk about another release clip style briefly. All right, so here we are again. We're letting out about 20 feet of line behind the boat, and then I'm sliding the rod. I'm gonna slide the rod back uh, in the uh, towards the front of the boat because I want to get to the to the tip right here. There we go. And and this is a different kind of uh, release clip style where there's a um, there's you do a twist seven, six seven times, and then there's a little um, a little notch in there that you 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 slide the line in and there's a tension screw that can control exactly how much tension is required to trip the release. So uh, you can make it really tight or really loose. Uh, it tends to work with lighter line, like, um, like um, a smaller diameter mono, right? You can, uh, uh, it won't slip as easily as, as the other style. So you're, if you're fishing some lighter mono, uh, this style might be helpful, um, or you just wanna really tighten that release uh, tension. All right, so here we go again. I'm letting line behind the boat, and now I'm uh, attaching it to that other style release clip, and uh, I'm gonna drop it down. We'll talk about dropping it down. So uh, you're gonna see, I get the rod up here, and uh, I'm gonna hold the rod in my left hand, my thumb on the spool, and then I'm gonna control the downward rate with my right hand. Uh, and as I'm dropping it, it's really important, I got my thumb on the spool applying just enough pressure to keep slack out of it, but still allowing it to drop down. All right, so I want you to watch and pay attention to what I'm doing with my right hand as I'm dropping down. I am pulling the brake back and then moving it forward slightly, backing it off slightly. It's because I'm letting it to start to spin, but then as it spins, it actually picks up speed. So I'm, I start to back it off by moving it forward slightly. I don't want it to drop too fast. You can damage your downrigger wire and some of your terminal gear if you do that. Pay also attention to the angle of my rod. Look at how my rod's pointed at the water. That's where you want, that's how much tension you want and how much slack you want removed. When that fish hits, you want it to pop up just like that and come tight. When you get a bite or a fish uh, trips the release clip, the first thing you want to do is you want to reel out the slack as fast as possible. There's a ton of slack between you and the fish right when that release clip trips and that's where a lot of times you're going to lose fish especially big king salmon if they decide to kind of swim with your with your um, with your boat instead of turn, grabbing it and turning let's take a break for a second from all the learning just to appreciate this battle with a, a downrigger hooked king salmon just outside of Nia Bay uh, last summer 2020 Oh, that's definitely oh cool. I saw the colors. <laughs> the big fish, boys. Dude, that's massive. That was... Oh! Oh my god. It's so heavy. That's a hat. It's a hat. You drop it in. All right, we got to talk about driving the boat by yourself with a tiller handle from the back of the boat while you're dropping down, managing a downward, hey, managing no a fishing rod. Shot. I want you to watch in this clip what I'm doing. I got my left hand on the rod, on the reel here, I'm dropping it down with my right hand, and watch what I'm doing with the tiller handle. Half the time, I'm using my, my backside to drive the boat and try to keep it straight because I'm trying to keep it going at two and a half to three miles an hour to make sure that uh, I'm not hit hooking a bunch of blackmouth shakers. This blackmouth fishing in early uh, early part of the year 2021. <clears throat> and so I'm trying to get down to the bottom and, uh, and avoid shakers. So I'm trying to keep it uh, with a good amount of speed and keep it straight. Uh, it's okay if your boat's got some wiggle in it. As a matter of fact, that actually helps, uh, helps you hook up um, but rather than going with the current in a straight line. I'm trying to hit bottom, come up slightly, take the slack out, and get to driving again. It's about to happen any second. Another thing that's really important when you're downrigger fishing for salmon is when you get that hookup, when you get that bite, 
you got to reel out the slack immediately and you want to keep the motor in four gear at a good clip of speed. Do not set the boat to neutral. Yep. yep. You can lose so many fish by setting it to neutral and just creating a little bit of slack that allows them to get off, especially when fishing with 11 inch flashers. All right, so on my last segment here, I want to talk about some downrigger, uh, some gear, um, specifically braid versus wire. And which one should you use? Uh, I can only show you what I'm doing here. Uh, for me, it's all about that wire. You know, I uh, one of the drawbacks to wire though is it's got to be replaced every every few seasons. It'll rust uh, and it can break and cost you cost you some serious money having I mean, to replace all your terminal uh, gear for your for your downrigger. Braid, on the other hand, does doesn't have that issue, right? So unless there's a frayed point in your your braid, uh, you, you really don't have to replace it. Uh, you can keep, keep fishing it. <clears throat> Another thing with uh, with wire is uh, it has an attraction or repulsion uh, element to it, characteristic to it, based on the current that's being put out there. Braid doesn't have that issue. Uh, braid is pretty current <clears throat> neutral. When fishing with wire and you got this trolling snap and you're gonna connect it to uh, the metal here, right, on the, on the downrigger ball, like this, when you connect it that way, you're putting out a current. Uh, and you, the current you're putting out Maybe uh, helping attract salmon, uh, or maybe uh, repulsing salmon. I put an article out there on pnwbestlife.com where I did a downrigger voltage test with some different combinations of factors. You should definitely check it out. But here I'll give you the I'll give you the summary. Uh, Chinook salmon like about uh, 0.6 uh, volts, and above if you go above that, they are repulsed uh, by the current. Um, if, if coho prefer 0.65. And if you go back above that, they're they're repulsed by the current. So so the goal for whatever species, right? If you're fishing with uh, with steel cable, is to give the right current for the species and and not repulse um, by having too much current. Um, <clears throat> what I what I was able to find is if I did if I did metal on metal. So if I did metal on metal with this connector, uh, I was putting out 0.65 volts. Now this might be different for your boat than mine, but I was putting out 0.65. So when I'm fishing for Schnook, I use this heavy duty zip tie that I talked about earlier, and I change it probably every few trips because eventually th running this in the water, uh, this will break, snap, and I'll lose my downrigger ball. So I, <clears throat> I like to put a new one on. But if I, uh, if I, if this is attached to the zip tie or plastic covered ring, I'm putting out a boy, about point. Uh, 58.59 which is perfect for chinook attraction if i run it like i said with metal to metal i'm at 0.65 which is perfect for coho and my fishing results have matched this by the way uh at 0.65 i've i've been the hottest boat fishing for coho um but i've struggled to hook chinook in that same in that same situation and look if your boat's fishing fine the way it is i'm the last person who's going to tell you to change up what you're doing but if you think you might be repelling uh, fish with your current. Maybe you just go with braid. Uh, it's simpler and uh, it also has less blowback because braid's thinner diameter for the, the, the same strength. Uh, you can fish uh, lighter downrigger balls or with a 15 pound ball you can fish deeper uh, than you can with, with, with steel wire which has a lot more blowback. So you're gonna have a lot more uh, of the C shape in the water where you might have a hundred feet of cable out but you're fishing at 90 feet uh, instead of 100 feet of cable at 95 feet. Uh, with braid, you might be able to fish 200 feet of water with uh, maybe just 220 feet of cable. And, uh, and with, with wire, you may not get down there, uh, period, because of the blowback. So those are all things to consider. Last thing I'll say is uh, commercial trollers, they use steel wire. There's a reason why uh, that, uh, and they use positive ion control with their black boxes. They want that current dialed in. Uh, they make their living uh, hooking salmon and uh, they want the optimal setting, uh, which is controlled current uh, with a steel cable. To conclude, uh, what questions do you have? I love it if you like this video and subscribe to my channel, but what questions do you have about downrigger fishing for salmon? There's a lot more we could cover. I'd love to uh, tailor next video on this topic to the questions you have, any feedback you have. Uh, please drop it in the comment section below. Have a great time out there. Good luck if you're going to CQ in a few days. Um, stay safe out on the water. Take care.